Oh, yeah. Daytime television. Now, guys don't watch too much. I realize the guys aren't into daytime TV. Most of the ladies in an audience like this don't watch either. But if anyone watches, it is mostly women. There's a lot of women-oriented shows. There's a lot of uh, pain, man. There's a lot of pain in the daytime. <laughs> A lot of tragedy, a lot of down trips, uh, soap operas, most especially. Ladies don't even call them soap operas anymore. They call them my stories. <laughs> call me back, Agnes. My stories are coming on. And there are lots of stories. And they all have doctors in them. Doctors in everything. Even if it's not about doctors, he'll be along. There's not much happiness in the daytime, even on the quiz shows, you know, where you'd expect to find an occasional winner and a little joy. They rarely have a winner anymore. They really don't get to play the games anymore. Damn rules take too long to explain. <laughs> By the time they get to the first question, the first question is, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> You've heard the rules. Well, you know how we play our game, don't you? The champion, Mrs. Muck and Fuss, will get the first question. <laughs> if she answers correctly, the challenger, Mrs. Fussmucker, will spin the big prize wheel to determine the champion's prize. If the wheel stops on a prize already won by the champion, she'll have to forfeit the prize and draw a number for a new category. If the wheel stops on a prize not yet won by our champion, she'll have a choice of either accepting the prize or taking a prize from the challenger's list, in which case the champion forfeits her turn and chooses the challenger's home partner from the revolving drum. <laughs> we'll call the challenger's home partner on the phone. We'll ask her 15 questions. If she can answer all of them correctly, she can select a number from 1 to 900. The champion will then spin the big prize wheel to determine the amount of money won by the challenger's home partner. Well, that's what happens if the champion answers correctly. If she answers incorrectly, she has to give us her firstborn male child. <laughs> well, it's only fair. Uh, those ladies don't risk anything, you know. I mean, they come to the studio empty-handed. And even the worst contestant of the month gets a copy of the home game. A little pat in the ass. Thank you, honey. God love you. <laughs> I'd like to see those ladies have to bring in their own furniture and bet it against the house, you know? <laughs> Give a little excitement. Okay, you've lost. Take it away, boys. Your living room. Okay. <laughs> Isn't she a good sport? <laughs> and then there's Let's Make a Deal. The seat of greed in America. You've seen the people on uh, Let's Make a Deal. You should see the ones they don't let on the show. <laughs> Take them away. Yeah, but you got to be a little bit dingy, I think, to be 43 years old and standing up there dressed like a radish, you know? <laughs> and the ladies, God love them, they show that greed when Monty shows the money. Hi, I'm Monty Holden. I have $500. Not anymore, Monty. <laughs> okay, you have the $500. What would you like to do? Keep the $500 or do you want to buy what Jay has in this box? He's bringing down the aisle. Jay, you want to bring that box on down? Jay, look up at the court. Jay, look up. Jay, boom, boom, boom. Well, now we know what Jay had in the box. <laughs> it was a cheese straightener. <laughs> Deluxe model, too. Okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep the cheese straightener, or do you want the $500? Or do you want door number one, door number two, or door number three? Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, Monty, Monty. <laughs> what were the doors again? Two or door number three. Oh, wow. Oh, all right, okay, all right. No, wait, okay, wait, okay. All right, no, wait. Oh, wait, Monty, Monty, Monty. Door number one, two, two, eight. No, wait, hold on. Two, what, wait, one, two, one, three, one, three, wait, wait. Okay, wait, I didn't go yet. Definitely. Two, one, wait, three, wait, no. Okay, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a fella by the toe. If you holler, you're out, Monty. <laughs> no. Okay, I got four. No, you don't have four. It's between two and one and three. Oh, and by the time she picks this anticlimactic, you know, and a little greedy. Yes, that's it. You've won a 1971 Ferrari. Oh, God, we have a small car. <laughs> It's 8 o'clock in Los Angeles. It's 9 o'clock in Denver. It's 10 o'clock in Chicago. In Baltimore, it's 642. <laughs> Time for the 11 o'clock.
o'clock report. <laughs> First of all, the headlines. Welcome Wagon runs over newcomer. Good humor man slays 10. Pen pal stabs pal with pen. Pediatrician dies of childhood disease. And Jacques Cousteau drowns in bathtub accident. We'll be back with full details in just a moment after this word from Cooley's Cigarettes. You know something, Bill? These cigarettes of mine, they taste like crap. <laughs> Say, Dan. <laughs> Crappy taste. Why don't you try the cool, refreshing taste of Coolies? Coolies, eh? You smoke them? Nope, found them in the subway toilet. <laughs> And now back to the news. History's 135th heart transplant operation was performed yesterday in New York City. One unusual note, the heart transplant took place in Central Park at midnight, and the donor's family was not consulted. <laughs> Dr. Timothy Leary's brother, really Leary, today announced the formation of a new religion, which teaches that when you die, your soul goes to a garage in Buffalo. <laughs> Police today arrested Margaret Fulcrum, a 45-year-old unregistered nurse, and charged her with accepting collect obscene telephone calls. <laughs> Famed television announcer Charlie the Tuna was found dead today of mercury poisoning. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> Good news from the Far East. No one was killed in Vietnam today. However, three people died of old age at the Paris Peace Talks. <laughs> and former French President Charles de Gaulle rose from the dead today. Just to show everyone he could really do it. <laughs> well, that's it from the news desk for the latest in sports. Here's Biff Barf. Good evening, sport fans. Biff Barf here in the Biff Barf Sportlight Spotlight, picking them up and barfing them right back at you. I call them the way I see them, and if I don't see them, I make them up. No games today. However, we do have a few late football scores still coming in from the far west. Guam Prep, 45. Marshall Islands, 14. Mindanao A&M, 27. Molokai, 10. Caltech, 14.5. MIT, three to the fourth power. <laughs> William and Mary, six. Nick and Tony, 105. <laughs> and here's a partial score, Stanford, 29. Well, that's it, kids. <laughs> that's it from the scoreboard in the world of golf today in the Fats Domino Desert Classic. First round leader, Willie Waterhazard, had a birdie, two eagles, and a duck this afternoon. <laughs> Meanwhile, the favorite Gary Fairway was way behind, scoring a record 609 strokes on the front nine when he accidentally stepped aboard a bus to Minneapolis while playing a difficult lie from the highway. Well, that's it, sport fans. Join me tomorrow afternoon on the ever-widening world of sports when I'll be presenting the national two-man pall-bearing championships. And next week, I'll be a guest hunter on American Sportsman. Six of us are going to kill a rabbit. <laughs> the latest in weather, here's Al Sleet, your hippy-dippy weatherman. Hey! Hey! Hey, hey possum! <laughs> hey, what you call your possum? <laughs> Al Sleet, hey, hippy-dippy weatherman, brought to you by Parsons Pest Control. Do you have termites, water bugs, and roaches? <laughs> 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 Parsons will get rid of the termites and water bugs and help you smoke the roaches. <laughs> Present temperature is 68 degrees at the airport, which is stupid because I don't know anyone who lives at the airport. <laughs> Downtown, it's much hotter. Downtown's on fire, man. 
Now, if you'll take a look at our national weather map, you'll see that we don't have one. So try to picture last night's map in your mind. Remember all those lines and numbers. Weather was dominated by a large Canadian low, which is not to be confused with a Mexican high. Eh? <laughs>